Terrific. Cool. Hello everyone and welcome to the official web show of the Zurich Film Festival to the ZFF Daily. My name is Max Lung and I have two very interesting and very unique guests here today in my talk. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sam Pressman and Walter Soxer. <laughs> nice to have you gents here with me. Uh, you're both here for your new movie, for Sam's new movie, The uh, Reconquest of the Useless, which is a uh, Cinematic pilgrimage to the locations of Werner Herzog's classic movie, Fitzgeraldo, which was produced by Walter. Uh, so we shall be talking about your documentary as well as a bit, dwell a bit of the past or, you know, go back in time and talk about how it was back then as well. But let me ask you the question first, Sam. How, in God's name, have you come up with the idea, I want to do a documentary on Werner Herzog's movie? Well, that's a... Uh a really bizarre question, but I guess is an important one. Uh, I think Werner is, is as inspiring of a filmmaker as anybody uh, could ever hope to look up to. Um, in, in a lot of ways, I think Werner, for a young filmmaker, is an ideal uh, idol because his, his you know, mantra or his message is really perfectly expressed in uh, Werner Herzog Eats His Shoe a great short documentary by Les Blank where he says, you know, if you want to make a film, steal a camera, steal Rostock, do, ever, do whatever you need to do, just make your film. And uh, I think that gets to the point of, of, you know, when you're trying to tell a story, you just have to go and do it. Um, and kind of the mythos of his character is what, uh, made me very fascinated and want to delve deeper into what, what he was after. And uh, I think when you look at Fitzcarraldo and Aguirre, they're, they're maybe the most insane productions that, that anyone's attempted in film. Um, and when we, when we began the project, we received a grant. We were, I have two partners in the film who are integral and it was the three of us trying to dream together, which was the root of our project. Um, Tell me a bit about the other two. Like, were, it, did, were they like-minded? They had the same passion for, for Werner Herzog's movie and for Fitzgeraldo's, you know, historic, uh, as you said, masterpiece? Uh, we all had sort of a different angle coming in. We, we met at university at Stanford. Um, Luke is a musician uh, and an anthropologist. and he really didn't know Werner Herzog coming into the project. He, he took the journey as, as a way to explore his thesis and his, his ideas of traveling in a new way. Uh, and then Harley, my second partner, is like a, a very insane writer and an actor who to me is like Klaus Kinski. Okay. Um, and Were there similarities or what? Well, they're just both Absolutely nutted. <laughs> I think Kinski, no one is Klaus Kinski. That's well, yeah, that's well, a whole different story. Kinski is not nutty at <laughs> all. <laughs> Kinski is obsessed. So. Okay. And what was it, the three of you, what, what, were, what were your expectations going into this production? And did you have different expectations individually? Um, yeah, I think absolutely there were different expectations, but part of the, the whole intent was to dream together. Um, Fitzcarraldo is really a film for dreamers to right. me that he's a man who dreams of bringing an opera house to the jungle and this this was Werner Herzog's kind of poetic license the, the historical character of Fitzcarraldo never had such dreams it was you know a, a completely fictitious and, and ecstatic creation that Werner uh, placed onto this character of Carlos Fermin Fitzgerald. Uh, so to us it was traveling and, and traveling together with this dream of finding a film. And for me, that was everything. The, the idea that we can connect to cinema in a way that can be experienced in, in, a, in a tactile and you know, tangible physical way, um, not purely the work of illusion and, and imagination. Um, 
So your journey, the three of you and the documentary, it doesn't have any parallel story to the original historic character that was Fitzcarroll. We, our, our journey is based on the book of Werner Herzog called Conquest of the Useless, which Walter could tell us some questions about, but to us was our, you know, our map and our, our holy grail, the way that we knew where Werner had made the film and the locations that we could travel to with the hope of finding something. And, you know, Werner, we met before, and he told us, you will find nothing. The jungle will have consumed me. All, memor all memory of me will be gone. You know, and, and uh, that wasn't true at all. You know, we, we met Walter. We met uh, Cesar Vivanco, who was Werner's sort of Peruvian right-hand man. We meet Huera Keke, who's an actor and pulled the boat into the tree in Aguirre. And, uh, you know, Let, let's talk a little bit about you, Walter, and, and of course also the, the iconic movie uh, for, for those watching at home who are not so familiar with, with Fitzgeraldo. Tell us, obviously, a bit about that production. Uh, it is a legendary production, or there's a lot of myth around that production in itself. Tell us a bit about how it was shooting that film. Well, uh, Fitzgeraldo is a, is a film that took five years of my life. and. Uh, I was, uh, I was sort of, I can always say, Werner, Werner had, uh, he had written the screenplay, Kinski played the role, but I was living that role for five years. I was building the ships and I was getting the Indians and I was uh, uh, building camps for 650 Indians who have never seen a film in their life. And uh, they stayed with me for seven months and uh, I pulled the ship over a mountain, and I. Uh, so tell I, tell us I about was, that. I mean, it was it was a crazy thing. Nobody believed that it that this was going to be possible. And uh, we had so a we had first we had a, a specialist from Brazil who was supposed to do it, and when he was on the location and saw the really the what what's going to come up. So he said, this is not going to be possible. Did you ever doubt it at any given point? Were you like, this is not going to happen? There was no chance. You had to do it. There was too much because money I was, time I was, I was, it was uh, f four years into my life. Right. So if I, if I missed, if, if I fuck missed up the this, boat. I mean, then, then yeah. that's the end of yeah. it. So yeah. there was no chance. Yeah. So what was your, so t tell us a bit about your journey. I mean, obviously you didn't pull the boat over the hill, but like, what was your chip on that, on, in, in well, your journey? Well, to me, making a movie, is pulling a boat over the mountain. Right. That that metaphor. Right. Uh, my father, who is a producer, uh, always says every film is a miracle, um, and I've heard that countless times as I've grown up. And to me, you know, watching Burden of Dreams, Walter's in it. You know, Werner is sort of the centerpiece of it and the mouthpiece for the for the film. But it's about that insane struggle and, and perseverance and determination to, to not give up on your dreams. And right. that was what inspired me to say, I want to know more about this. Mm. I want to make movies in my life. I don't know if this will be able to be a film, mm. but I know that I want to take the journey to learn a little bit more. Um, and How's it for you, Sam, uh, in, in regards of experiencing the production, but also the locals, and like h how was, what were the, maybe some of the challenges as well? And we didn't really have uh, an itinerary. We didn't know mm. what we were doing. Okay. The whole point was not knowing. Right. Um, and, and that was integral to Luke's uh, whole way of traveling and challenging that a tourist needs to have their hotel booked for the next night and mm. everything in order. That, that by being open to a little bit of chaos and trusting that the people you meet along the river will be friendly and will welcome you mm. um, was the key for us. And it, it was remarkably true. And mm. I think in our world today, there's so much negativity and so many fear <coughs> mongers that tell us, don't go there, don't do that, worry, be afraid. And I think that there's so much value in remaining open and allowing you know, the mysteries of, of the world to meet you and, and greet you and uh, we certainly found that to be true. I mean of course there were 
huge problems. We, we got in fights like friends do. Uh, well, I got to ask you, Walter, as well. I mean, Werner and, and, and Kinski, obviously, uh, I don't know how much of it is true and how much of it is, uh, you know, myth, but tell us a little bit more about the, that crazy relationship. Well, it was in the, in the first film in Akira, uh, it was Werner had a very little chance to direct that film because Kinski was just refusing to get directed by uh, a, f a guy who made a film with dwarves. So he says, you, you're, da you're a dwarf director and don't even talk to you're me. You're a dwarf director. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I must say, I mean, Kinski had much more experience in filmmaking than we all together had. I mean, uh, Akira was uh, were in the second film, uh, the, thir the third film. And, uh, uh, Kinski, uh, when Werner talked to him about uh, really exceptional landscapes and uh, the, 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 the wonder of new discovered landscapes, uh, Kinski would say, shut up, my face is your landscape. And, and he was white. And he was white. And you just look at that film and that had very little to do with Werner Herzog. It's a very different film, and uh, uh, especially, I mean, I made fi five films with uh, Herzog and uh, Kinski. I was there on all five of them, and uh, just imagine it wouldn't have been Kinski. These films would, would look completely different, mm -hmm. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that. It's especially Aguirre and uh, Fitzcarraldo was more the merit of Kinski than Werner Herzog. But as you say, you know, it's it's the obsession that, yeah, that the obsession, Herzog the was going The obsession came, for. came mm. more from Kinski. Kinski is a, a, an obsessed man, mm. and he, he set the, the, the pace. But in a way, that gets to the question of, like, what brings the cinema to an audience? Is it the director who has the no, vision of the world film, or the film, actor who Film is teamwork always. Of course. You cannot, you cannot say this was a genius director or, right. or this is a genius actor. Mm. It's, it's teamwork. Absolutely. And one has to see that very clearly. And teamwork of course, makes the of dream course, work. Of course, uh, well, this Fitzgerald has very little to do with dream. This was very, very hard work, I tell you. I think this, this is a... This is a something you do once in your life. I can imagine. Yes. Gentlemen, it was uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Unfortunately, time is up, but I think this is a great way to uh, end uh, today's show. Dream work is teamwork. Movies are made out of a team effort. Thank you for being on the show, Sam. Thank you, Walter, Thank Dr. You, Walter. Thank you, Walter. I wish you all the best. <laughs>